So you're thinking about moving to Salem, Oregon, but you wanna get a better feel for what's around town and what there is to do in the surrounding area. Well, you are in the right spot because in today's video, we are actually staying in the office doing a map tour of Salem, Oregon, where we're gonna be looking at some common commute times, some things to do around the area, and then we'll be looking at the different parts of town a little bit also. So stick around and check it out. If you're new to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living here in Salem, Oregon, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Salem. My name is Ryan and I get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you who are thinking of moving to the Land Valley and I love helping you guys out. So whether you need to move in a day, a week, or a year, feel free to give me a call, text, email, or schedule a Zoom call with me. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to Salem, Oregon. And like we mentioned in the intro today, we are doing a map tour of Salem, Oregon, and we are gonna start out kind of broad looking at the Willamette Valley in general, and then we'll be getting into more of the nitty gritty here in Salem, Oregon. And I like doing these videos. Uh, I'm a visual learner and I really have to see things on a map in order to understand where things are. So that's why we're doing this, just so you guys can get a good understanding in case you're out of the area. I love using Google Maps. It's a great resource, uh, really saves on some of that gas money as you're can really do a lot of that research without having to drive around, switching between the different layers uh, so you can see things and then using this little guy and using the street view to really see a lot of things here. You can get a lot of detail and a lot of information. Uh, so here we are and I just wanna give you just a general layout so you guys really understand where we're located. We're talking about the Willamette Valley here in Oregon and the Willamette Valley is a great area we were talking about and Salem is right in the center of it with Portland on the north side and Eugene down here on the south side of it. And you can tell it is this lighter green color and that is the valley. Now the valley is surrounded by mountains on both sides. You have the Cascade Mountain Range over here and then you have the Coastal Range which is right over here. And now the Cascade Range is going to have uh, lots of mountains in it uh, which actually get snow and are quite a bit higher versus the Coastal Range is a little bit shorter um, so you don't get snow quite as often and you don't have those mountains that are out of the tree line either. Like I mentioned, the Willamette Valley in between. Uh, great area, a very lush area of Oregon. Lots of farming, pretty low in elevation. Now there is a lot to do. We're just going to talk about recreation here for a little bit and then we'll get into some popular commute times. But for recreation, there is a lot of camping and hiking to do in both of these mountain ranges. And I'm not going to give you specifics just because you can go look on all trails and there are just tons of trails all over the place. Oregon and the Pacific Northwest is really known for having a lot of outdoor recreation. But some popular trips to take um, from Salem is going to be all going over to Bend. And Bend you have a lot of access to, here I'll give you directions to and from just so you can see. Some travel times, Bend's about three hours away depending on traffic, and you're gonna be going over Highway 22 here. Uh, Bend has some great access to some hiking. South Sister is a very popular mountain to hike from that area. So you have a lot of hiking over here, South Sister, a lot of backpacking, camping, a lot of outdoor activity. And then you also have some skiing here when you get down to Mount Bachelor, some really nice skiing right there. And then if you're looking a little bit closer to Salem, you are gonna have Sisters, Sisters, Oregon, which is right after you hit, get off the pass, off of 22, get over into the high desert area. Sisters, a great spot, again, for a weekend or even a day trip, a very popular tourist town here in Oregon. Uh, Black Butte Ranch has a lot of cool places to stay if you're looking for more of that luxury vacation, kind of like Eagle Crest or Sun River, and then Camp Sherman, and these other areas are more of your dry, primitive camping, uh, great spots to go. I, that's the kind of camping I like to do. And then you have a lot of mountains here in, in the Cascade Range, South Sister, Middle Sister, North Sister, Mount Washington, Three Finger Jack, Mount Jefferson, and then the most famous in Oregon is gonna be Mount Hood. So if you really like skiing, we have Mount Bachelor, of course, which we already talked about, or you can check out Hoodoo, which is a, Great spot to check out. It is gonna be your cheaper place to go skiing. I think one of the cheapest places to go skiing in Oregon, if not the cheapest, it has a $25 
lift ticket on Thursdays during the season. And you can even get a coupon sometimes. They're usually over in Bend, so kind of hard to get the coupon. But it is a free rental if you go on Thursday. So it's $25 for a lift ticket and a rental if you don't have your own equipment. Very affordable, a great spot to go. Only downside is it's a pretty small place to go skiing. So if you go there a ton, you can kind of get bored because there's not a lot of runs. I think there's only four lifts and one of them's usually shut down, unfortunately. <laughs> and it has, does have night skiing, so a great spot to go with maybe a group if you're looking for some more affordable skiing. Uh, other places to go skiing are going to be Mount Hood, and that has a lot of great spots. Mount Hood, oh, uh, a little issue there with the type in. Mount Hood Meadows um, is going to be a very popular spot. You also have Timberline and Ski Bowl up there. I think Ski Bowl is going to be the most affordable, but it's also the lowest on the mountain, so it's going to be open the latest in the season and closes the earliest in the season versus these two, Timberline and Meadows, are up a little bit higher. Timberline actually has the highest lift. I think most of um, Mount Hood Meadows here is up a little bit higher than most of Timberline. So both, all three of these great spots to check out for skiing and snowboarding if that is what you're into. And again, as you can tell, about two and a half hours away versus your Hoodoo, which is a little bit closer. Hoodoo ski area. I forgot how far that one was. Eh, a little, little under two hours, but that could be a little bit longer in the winter because you're gonna be on snow for a little bit of it. Okay, and back here, another popular spot to check out is gonna be Detroit Lake. This is the D-E-T-R, sorry, spelling it wrong. Hard to think and type and look at all at the same time. And Detroit Lake, it's taking you around to the opposite side of the lake, but you can obviously go to over here and it is about 56 minutes so about an hour depending on where in the lake you're going but this is a man-made lake so it's a reservoir but very great spot to go if you're looking for a day on the lake if you're into uh if you're into water skiing or in wakeboarding a great place to go these arms over here are going to be um, slow zones and so those are you get a lot of people floating um, in these arms just have their boats anchored and relaxing in the sun. It is a mountain lake and pretty deep, so it's not super warm water, uh, but it is a great spot to go. And the closest lake here to Salem, and probably the most popular and the biggest lake here to Salem. There's a few others here out of Sweet Home, and then a few out around Eugene, um, but this is probably the most popular one here around Salem. And then zooming back out here on the other side of the mountains, you of course have the coast and Lincoln City is gonna be that closest city on the coast that you can get to. We call it the coast because it is not warm. It's usually around 68 degrees, almost year round, a little colder in the winter. In the summer, it's a nice reprieve if it's hot over here in Salem. Head over that coastal range and the ocean keeps it nice and cool. So you can usually escape the heat if you are trying to get out of the heat. Uh, again, Lincoln City, a nice spot to go. Most of it has a sandy beach, some cool hikes here at the northern end of it. And then over here on Cascade Head, lots of places to go in and around to get your hiking in and some nice shopping there in Lincoln City. Lots of other spots to go, uh, but we'll end it there just so this video is not two hours long. And again, Lincoln City, a little over an hour to get there. And then for some places here closer to Salem, I've mentioned these before, but you have Silver Falls State Park. Um, this one, because we live so close to it here in Salem, we kind of get used to it and don't really take in the wonder that it is. There are a lot of people that come from all over just to go to Silver Falls State Park. It has a lot of really beautiful waterfalls right next to each other, some right off the road you don't even have to hike to but there's a lot of hiking there, biking, both paved and mountain biking, off trail, places to go horseback riding. I talk about it in one of my videos, so check out my Salem playlist if you wanna look at those more. But it is a great spot, just 40 minutes outside of Salem. And as you can see, it is a big area, this darker green area of the state park. Most of it is right around here, but the horseback riding and mountain biking is over in this area. And again, beautiful, just beautiful area out there in the wilderness. And then over here on the north side of Salem, 
we are going to have Willamette Mission. L L A M E Willamette Mission. Right. Willamette is even hard for me to spell, and I've been around it my whole life. So Willamette Mission State Park is this darker green area up here, right off of the Willamette River. Lots of activities to do. There's a disc golf course. Again, places to go horseback riding and hiking and biking and just a all around beautiful park. A lot of people go out there just for the day, maybe for a picnic. They have some covered picnic shelters um, out there and a great spot to check out. There's a, for the, all state parks here in Oregon, there's a $5 parking pass or you can buy the pass to get in for a year or two years, depending on how, what kind of pass you buy. That way you don't have to pay that $5 time every time you go in case you go quite often. Okay, that is enough of the around Salem area. Let's get into um, more of the nitty gritty of living here in Salem. So if you're moving here from Salem, a lot of people work out of the area or have to travel to other cities in the area. Um, and so I wanna give you some popular commute times. Um, it's just things to think about when you're moving to the area, whether you wanna live on the north side, south side of Salem, or maybe one of the towns in between these areas, just in case you're looking at these areas and wanna cut down on that time a little bit. Uh, PDX is going to be the main airport here in the Willamette Valley that most people fly out of. It's the international airport where you can get anywhere you need to go from right here. And as you can tell, it's about an hour away. Now we are looking here at about 930 in the morning, so not too bad of traffic. If you're looking at it closer to five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, this can get closer to a two hour drive. Uh, I think 205 is the more common route that most people take to get to the airport instead of driving through Portland proper here. You kind of avoid Portland proper and go through Clackamas, Happy Valley area. Uh, but it all depends on traffic. Um, if you're just looking to get to Portland, maybe downtown Portland. Again, if you have a job down there, you're looking at 52 minutes. Again, this is pretty low traffic area. I don't think it's pulling traffic in at all for some reason or I think it is just good traffic at the moment, which is kind of surprising for 9.30 on a Friday morning. So Portland, another very common place to commute for people living here, down here in Salem. Maybe you have a high paying job up there, but want a little lower cost of living down here in Salem. And then Eugene, Oregon, again, on the south side of the Willamette Valley, a very, another popular spot. This is a boring drive. This is just straight down I-5, very straight road, uh, very, uh, the scenery is beautiful, but it is all the same most of the way down. So nothing really looks different, uh, especially there's a section down here where there's literally not even a bend in the road. But again, a lot of people do this drive. I know every day uh, myself, I couldn't do it, but hour and 10 minutes to get down there. Uh, this one usually is pretty good. There's not a ton of traffic going down to Eugene until maybe you hit Eugene area, but the in-between is usually pretty good. Maybe a tiny slowdown in Albany, but usually not too bad. Um, and Eugene, of course, is a popular spot to either commute to or maybe if you're going to uh, University of Oregon or U of O, that is down Eugene, so that could be a commute if you're maybe have a college student or you yourself are in college and going, maybe moving to the Salem area. Another popular commute is gonna be Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, I don't think there's a ton of people commuting to Corvallis for work, but it is a popular spot uh, just because OSU, Oregon State University is there and definitely a popular spot, go Beeves, that's where I went. Um, but a very doable commute here from Salem. You can tell there's a few routes depending on if there's traffic on I-5 or over there on 99W. So a few ways to get through there and you can also cut through Albany depending on where the issues are. And Corral's another nice little town that we'll cover some point in the future. Just to bring it a little bit closer, Albany. Albany is about 33 minutes away. Another nice uh, little town uh, just south of Salem. Then Woodburn. Uh, Woodburn is about 26 minutes to the north. A great option maybe if you're commuting to Portland and you want to be a little closer to Portland. And then Woodburn also has outlet malls, uh, premium outlet malls, which are a very popular spot. 
um, to go to for some of that premium shopping and a little bit discount shopping and some of those bigger name brands. Well, we are gonna zoom in here on Salem a little bit and talk about the major roads here and then the different parts of Salem. And now the main roads going through the Lamp Valley is gonna be I-5 here. That's what you're gonna be taking to get up to Portland and down to Eugene. And then we have Highway 22, which is the one that goes over to Lincoln City West and then the Pass uh, Sisters and Bend if you're going east. Um, as you can tell, that is I-5 is the only interstate. And pro tip, if you're coming from California and don't wanna stick out as a Californian, don't call it the five, we just call it I-5. Um, other, way, other ways to get up to Portland are gonna be 99E. Uh, maybe if you live in West Salem, you could hop onto 99W up here and be taking this highway. Uh, some of these are okay options, 99E and these other roads. They usually are just single lane. There's some passing areas, but I-5, north of Salem is going to have three lanes. I-5 south of Salem only has two lanes for most of it besides when you're going through Eugene. So I-5 really is the only place where you're going to have a little higher traffic, faster speed limits, um, and the opportunity to pass people regularly versus other roads can get kind of clogged down, especially during farming season when you have farming equipment like combines, swathers on the road. Those really can cause some slowdowns on these highways over here and over here versus those, that kind of equipment's obviously not allowed on I-5. And zooming back here in on Salem, I just wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the different areas of town. You have uh, central Salem around and here. Now, these areas are very general. Um, there is definitely some controversy and discussion depending on who you're talking to exactly where are these areas. But this is, in general, your central Salem area. You have downtown here right by the river and a lot of older historic houses in this area. The, it's debatable whether or not this is central, east, or northeast Salem, but uh, for the purposes of this, it is close enough. Uh, West Salem is gonna be your most divided off area of Salem. It's on the opposite side of the Lant River, also in a different county. It's in Polk County over here on the west side of the river versus the east side of the river is going to be Marion County. Down here below, uh, this is very aptly named South Salem. Uh, it's South and Southeast Salem, and it's this area over here, and usually it's south of um, Highway 22 here. Oh, here, I'll put a W there, and then you got an S here for South Salem. And then this area over here east of I-5 is East Salem, but it kind of gets clumped in together with Northeast Salem. Um, just because they are very similar in layout and what is there. Um, so we just call that Northeast and East Salem. And then this section right here, most people just mistake it as a different section of Salem, but it is actually its own little city, Kaiser. Um, and I have a video coming out soon about Kaiser, so uh, check that one out when it comes out. You know, I'll get rid of my horrendous drawings here so you don't have to look at them too much. Um, and then we will zoom in on the different areas. Uh, Central Salem here is a great spot to go. It is gonna be the main shopping center here, the downtown area, lots of little restaurants, and you can tell uh, that grid area here uh, has a lot of nice little parks. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. And then there are some nice historical homes, and a lot of these neighborhoods are Areas where if you wanna walk or bike more, uh, these are gonna be great spots because you can get to a lot of things that you need. Uh, unfortunately, there's no good grocery store here in downtown. I've heard rumors of one starting up, uh, but I have not confirmed those rumors or seen any evidence that that is happening. But again, great little neighborhoods. You see a lot of people out walking through the parks and just around the areas there. Uh, West Salem is the most divided off from the rest of Salem and the lines of it are obviously very clear because it is on the west side of the river. Um, it has its own little shopping centers, kind of its own little city over here, but still part of Salem. Very nice. Uh, most of the shopping here is along Edgewater and then down here along this road, which is Wallace Marine Road. I when you know something and then you're talking about it, you blank on the name all the time. 
But yeah, Wallace Marine Road down here is a lot of the main shopping right here. And then of course residential and all your schools are gonna be up in the area. Now, one thing about West Salem is most of it is on a hill. So I will turn on the terrain function here for you just so you can see uh, very bumpy um, right when you get out of the area down here on the bottom for your shopping it goes right up into the hill area so if you don't like living on a hill uh, West Salem is not going to be for you there are not many flat houses uh, a lot of two-story houses a lot of very unique architecture over here in Salem as they in West Salem as they try to deal with the elevation um, the, it is just at the top of the uh, Eola Hills is what this uh, little range is called. Uh, lots of great little vineyards up there, kind of. The, some of the best vineyards here in the valley are in the Eola Hills and then around the Dundee area. So that is a little bit of West Salem. Turn off the terrain just to make the map a little bit cleaner and easier to see. South Salem is, of course, one of the bigger areas here in Salem. Lots of golf clubs, uh, lots of different types of housing here in South Salem, just because it is so big, has a lot of condos, a lot of HOAs, a lot of non-HOA communities, historic homes, brand new homes as they are subdividing and breaking into new ground, doing new units, uh, retirement homes, and all sorts of things down here in South Salem. If you're getting over here into this area, the Sunny Slope, South Salem, kind of inconvenient to get to I-5 sometimes. So if you're commuting a lot, maybe you might not want to be over here. But I mean, all things are doable. This is kind of one of the nicer areas of Salem. This and West Salem are probably the most preferred areas for people in Salem if you're looking for those newer, nicer houses. Uh, West Salem doesn't really have new houses, but they have some really nice houses and you get a lot of nice uh, re remodeled houses in West Salem. And then we already talked about Central Salem, and then you have Northeast and East Salem is this area. One of the benefits of North and Northeast Salem is it is flat. Here, I'll turn that terrain back on. Uh, South Salem definitely has some hills into it, not quite as hilly as West Salem, but this Northeast Salem is a very flat, not a lot going on in terms of elevation. Um, so if you're looking for maybe buildable land, uh, East Salem, North East Salem is a great spot to do that. Um, the Hayesville area along Kale Street has some new developments going on. There was a big farm that sold a few years ago. So if you're looking for brand new houses or houses that are just a few years old, this is a great spot to check out. Um, other than that, not a whole lot going on in East Salem. And then you of course have Kaiser over here on the north side, which again, a video coming out soon on that area. Then I want to move in here and show you some of the main retail areas in Salem. Of course, talked about the downtown grid down here, lots of nice shops, lots of little boutiques, not many com big chain restaurants or chain stores, but little independent, um, locally owned stores here in the downtown area. Very popular spot to go check out for a date night or walking around. Um, if you're looking for more of your convenience or retail shopping, need some clothes, need some groceries, uh, some of the best spots are here on Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster is going to be the main road going through East Salem here. Uh, all the way from 22, you have some Winco and lot, got lots of grocery stores, outdoor stores, clothing stores. The mall here is going to be the Willamette Town Center, and that is just this block right here. This used to be an indoor mall, has been transformed in the last few years into just an outdoor strip mall. Uh, there's still an indoor space, but you can't even get into it. They're currently remodeling it. But some new stores coming here and some really cool uh, good stores uh, in that area. And then Fred Meyer and there's a Walmart and a Safeway and lots of those convenience stores along um, Lancaster Road here. Uh, then downtown and then there are some here um, as you highway 22 goes right through Salem and downtown Salem and there's some good retail areas off of here again another Walmart uh, this section uh, turns into Mission Street and kind of wanders off over here as you get to downtown but so you'll hear this called 22 or Mission Street and yeah lots of 
good shopping and little restaurants around here. Not quite as dense as you have over on Lancaster, but a few stores down there. Then if you are South Salem, the main shopping centers are going to be off of commercial here, really from the split Liberty commercial all the way down to the middle between Kubler and I-5 again. Uh, lots of shopping and uh, retail areas. And then there is a little bit of retail area down here off of Liberty. And then for West Salem, like we mentioned, that retail area is gonna be here off of Edgewater and Wallace Marine Park. So if you're looking for some fun activities to do, maybe on a date night or just coming through, there's ax throwing. Yep. Ax throwing, uh, that's some places to buy ax because I didn't type out the whole thing. Or there's Oregon ax, which is an ax throwing. They also have a mobile cart that they take to things like the state fair, which is a fun thing. There are some escape rooms uh, here in Salem, not a ton. Um, but there's two downtown and then there's one in the Croc Center up in Northeast Salem. Uh, there's lots of movie theaters, M-O-V-I-E. Uh, lots of movie theaters, uh, big chains, little chains, uh, places where you can go out to eat in the movie theater. Uh, Northern Lights down here on the bottom is going to be your discount movie theater. There are two bowling alleys. Uh, these are both going to be in East Salem and then there is one in Kaiser, oh, one in North Salem, one in East Salem. There are golf courses in and around Salem, quite a few options, both public and private courses, and then a few disc golf courses that are popping up there, you can see also. And museums, if you are looking to do more of the touristy thing while you're in Salem, lots of museums in and around. Um, a mental health museum, which is kind of a cool one to go check out. Um, and then like some of these historic houses around the parks and then the universities and the Willamette Heritage Center is a cool one to check out. But other than that, I just wanted to show you some of the parks in Salem. There are a lot of them, as you can tell. Um, some of the popular ones, I've talked about them before but you have Riverfront Park, Wallace Marine Park, and Mento Brown Island Park. And these are actually all connected to each other via bridges that cross the slough and the Blant River here. So if you're looking for some continuous park use, um, that is one of the biggest, that is the biggest system here in Salem. Uh, one I haven't mentioned before is gonna be Bush Pasture Park. And this is a really nice area here in downtown Salem, walking distance to downtown Salem. They have a lot of events here, a lot of races here. Uh, Willamette University is here in downtown Salem and they actually have McCullough Stadium here. Here, I'll pull up the other layer just so you can see. So that's the stadium for the university. Um, in the middle here of Bush Pasture Park, there is a baseball diamond. Uh, this is a flat area of grass where you can go play there's a lot of groups that play soccer or rugby down here and then this area up here is another sorry so many pop-ups uh, but this area up here is another area you see people a lot uh, playing game field games and then there's a lot of nice shade trees and the oak trees there's a beautiful rose garden and then another popular thing is uh, this is a derby hill so you see a lot of people skateboarding here uh, riding bikes and they do have derby events every once in a while. And then another park, uh, just to mention it because Oregon, Salem is Oregon State Capital, is going to be the Oregon State Capital Park. Uh, just a beautiful, very small park between all of these government buildings. Um, some people say Oregon State Capital looks kind of funny. I think it is nice and unique and has a lot of character here. Um, has the Golden Man on top of it. Uh, this park uh, is very beautiful in the spring as these cherry blossom trees are blooming, have those pink cherry blossoms and always a pretty walk as those are starting to fall on the ground and there's kind of pink everywhere in contrast with these white marble buildings. But there you have it, that is my map tour of Salem, Oregon and of course again love using Google Maps as just a great resource you can see all this farmland around and really just explore the areas again without spending that gas money. 
So I hope that you guys found this useful. If you're looking for more of a boots on the ground, looking through the neighborhood video, then check out some of my vlog tours. I have videos on all the different areas of Salem and some coming out on Kaiser here pretty soon. So if you have any questions about any of these areas or wanna talk more about moving to Salem, feel free to give me a call, text, or email. I'd be happy to help you out. Really love working with you guys as you're exploring the different areas to move to here in the Willamette Valley. But for now, uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you around town.